Call the July 15, 2014 meeting of the Planning Board to order. The Board will be considering tonight's agenda in the following order. Number one, approval of the minutes from the June 17 Planning Board meeting. Number two, the Thomas Memorial Library expansion renovation site plan. Number three, the Wells site plan amendment. Number four, Cardinal Lane private road extension and resource protection permit. Five, public comment on items not on tonight's agenda. And number six will be adjourned. So number one, approval of the minutes. This is from June 17. Anyone had any comments, any comment, uh, questions on those minutes? No, then would anyone like to make a motion? Thank you, Karen. Make a motion. We approve the minutes for the June 17, 2014 meeting as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Henry, for a second. Any discussion? All those approved? Okay, abstaining? Thank you. One abstention is Elaine. Next item on our agenda is the Thomas Memorial Library expansion, expansion and renovation site plan. Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a site plan review of the Thomas Memorial Library addition and renovation located at 6 Scott Dyer Road. The application will be reviewed for compliance under Section 19-9 site plan regulations. This uh, item will be addressed in the following format. The town planner will provide an overview of the item. The applicant will summarize any changes made to the plan since the last meeting, followed by a public hearing. The board may then begin discussion of the item, concluding with a motion for the board to consider. Maureen, do you have an overview for us? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, this project is located in the town center district. It's um, a municipal use, so it falls under the uh, requirements in the town center under municipal use. Um, for this evening, a public hearing has been scheduled. The review would be both under the site plan regulations and under the town center design requirements. Um, it should be noted that it's the library is on a very large lot known as the school campus. Um, so that's the end of my presentation, but I have agreed to uh, make a statement on behalf of Liza Quinn, who is not here this evening. Uh, Liza sent me uh, some comments that she wanted me to forward to the planning board. And I wrote that I regret that forwarding this email to the planning board may cross the line of a planning board member conducting a discussion of a project by email. This discussion needs to be at a planning board meeting where the applicant and the public can be present to avoid any appearance of ex parte communications. Uh, because your concerns are likely about what I said at the site walk and because you will not be attending the next planning board meeting on July 15th. Uh, this is awkward. In order to avoid any appearance of planning board impropriety and also accommodate your schedule, I'm willing to read aloud your comments on your behalf at the July 15th meeting. So her comments, which you all have a copy of in front of you, got, are as follows. Uh, Maureen, I had a chance to go back and look at the town center buffering standard, and it is indeed substantially different than how it was described at today's site walk. For non-compatible uses, it requires, quote, wider buffers and earth berms or wood fences for physical separation. Denser massing of deciduous and evergreen planting, unquote, that provides for seasonal variation in buffer continuity. Further, it says that, quote, a narrow buffer requires dense planting, unquote. So if the buffer is indeed narrow, it needs to be dense. The apartment abutting the site is a non-compatible use as it is a residence next to a library. The library next to a school or even a business could be viewed as compatible. Attached is a screenshot of the town center buffering standard, page 90 of the zoning ordinance. Please forward this to the other members as I believe the information they got about the ordinance at the site walk was incorrect. Thank you, Liza. Okay, thank you. And at this time then, um, the applicant can come forward um, and make any presentation to the board. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman of the Planning Board. My name is Jessica Sullivan, and I am chairman of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. The Library Building Committee Chairman, Councilor Molly McCausland, could not be here tonight, so I would like to speak briefly on her behalf and on behalf of the Library Building Committee. Before you tonight is our proposed site plan for the renovation of our town library. This is the product of countless hours of dedication, work, and study by a remarkable cross-section of Cape Elizabeth citizens, including citizens at large, school board members, school department members, library trustees and staff, library foundation members, municipal staff, and town councilors. It is our hope 
to present this plan to the full town council for approval in August and to the citizens in November for a referendum. We are very pleased to be before, here before you tonight and at this point in the process. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Eric Duby, Casco Bay Engineering, and I am the uh, civil engineer on the project. Um, here with me tonight are Peter Beagle, landscape architect, uh, Dick Reed, and Cynthia Lobenstein, um, architects for the project. What I'd like to cover, as you would discuss, was uh, essentially the, um, some of the changes and also would discuss some of the site walk. Bear with me a minute. So a few of, or most of the comments that at least I had to address uh, were specifically dealing with the comments by uh, Steve Harding, which works for AMIC. He's a review engineer. And um, they had to deal with some, uh, some drafting issues and some display issues. Um, and also the other concern that he had um, was specifically to do with, um, we had a, a sheet that was a little too congested, so I had site plan utilities shown with site grading and everything. So what I did was create another drawing, which was site utilities, and that's a C1.3, and that's the new drawing that you have in your package. Um, C1.2, again, deals with the uh, grading and drainage um, that, uh, that we worked on. Steve did not have an issue with the actual um, stormwater report and as noted in his latest letter on that. Um, the other issues that Steve had brought up, specifically one was dealing with um, water lines in display. I've already addressed that situation and, and made that clearer on what we need to do. The issue specifically with that was that the existing water lines uh, that we have in the ground are not adequate to service the building. Uh, we needed a larger sprinkler line, which is a three inch line. We have a four inch tap uh, or valve that's out basically at the entrance um, at Scott Dyer Road. And we also needed a larger service for the library itself. So we are able to use the existing service for the Spurwing School, but, we, um, but we're bringing in, again, a new line, a new, uh, new line from the street to serve the sprinkler line for the library and the expansion and also for uh, any future development at the Spurling School. So I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, and again, that's already been addressed. Uh, a lot of the other comments that Steve had had in this latest um, um, memorandum, I, I've already addressed uh, most of those comments, so we don't have any issue with those. I think I'm going to have to get together with him and just uh, to clarify a couple things and then end that and, and we'll be all set. So, so that's where that stands. Um, um, can I just interrupt? Which ones are you specifically looking to clarify, just in case anyone from the board has a question? Just line work. He's, he's being very specific about what line work is, and I just want to make sure I tried to clarify that for this uh, go around. So it's really just drafting and display issues. So nothing, nothing that affects actual design. Nothing from this letter that would be uh, this 12 item letter that is uh, very specific about issues, about utilities or. Um, uh, materials being used, nothing along those lines? No, I don't have any issues with any of his comments. All right, so, so. as I think I did hear you say, you will be addressing, if you have not already, all of the items in this letter? That is correct. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. I, I'd rather have the clarification on that, so. Uh, so that addresses um, his comments. Um, we did, um, I will say that, um, based on some comments and a, a letter that was issued to us about site lighting. Um, we have uh, 
basically um, done a new site lighting plan with the town center lights and not with the uh, taller poles. So we've eliminated that and that change is, um, has come. So I wanted to make you aware of it. It was not submitted, but, um, but it meets the, uh, basically the ordinance and what the intent is. So, and what, again, the request was. Beyond that, uh, the only other item that I am working on right now is a DEP site uh, plan amendment. One, uh, we were hoping that we would fall within the exemption. The specific issue is the exemption is 30,000 square feet, but that's for educational purposes only. The library does not fall under educational purposes as the school, the adjacent schools do, even though we're on the same site. So uh, I've already met with DEP, I've shown them, I've shown them the drainage, the stormwater report, um, and uh, basically I have to submit that so they do not see any major issues with, um, with what we're doing. We're going to treat our, um, treat our, basically our stormwater with a um, filtration device and, um, and take care of it that way. So that's the update on that. As far as landscaping, um, and I'm going to hand, hand this over to uh, Peter Beagle. We, during our site walk, and obviously with the memo that you just received um, from uh, Ms. Quinn, basically we focused our, uh, our attempts or our basically our issues over in the, the screening and also uh, the um, existing plants uh, adjacent to the Spurling School. And as discussed with the existing um, overhead electrical service, the trees and plants in this area are to be removed completely. There was discussion, and that's what you also see in uh, the notes from the arborist, of basically this tree, this um, uh, Norway, um, Norway maple that's over adjacent to this parking area. So there's a, there's a large Norway maple that will be removed adjacent to the Spurwing School, for clarification, but there is also a Norway maple that's of medium size that's adjacent to the parking area there. So from our standpoint, I guess we'd like to have a discussion about that and just see how the planning board feels. I don't think there's um, a huge issue either way from, from our side. Um, and so we just like to have a discussion and, and nail that down. So um, at this point, turn it over to Peter for any other additional changes that we talked about, and then we're happy to answer questions. Can I ask Eric a quick question? Yes. Did you ever make a determination as to whether the fence along the uh, southern portion there is on the site or not? You're talking about yes. this fence that's that right here? Yeah. Have not. We can we can clarify. Well, it would be that. good to know because if it if the town owns it, then the buffer question kind of goes away. Maybe not. Maybe I mean, but we can. Yes, it, it may. Can, I think it would up, make a can, difference. We can have a full discussion on all the information on buffering. Peter. Uh, good evening, Peter Beagle with Land Design Solutions. I have a little color up here instead of that, if you don't mind. Some of the uh, uh, issues, that, tree issues that I would address are the, uh, the arborist uh, mentioned a number of things in his, uh, his comments. There's a, uh, the darker green circles that you see on this plant are trees to remain. Each one of these red squares is uh, uh, related to one of the uh, notes that the arborist had made. This note right here is a spruce tree that had uh, a lot of bittersweet in it that we saw on our site walk, and we had called for the bittersweet to be removed and the tree to remain. And the tree warden uh, recommended that uh, his thought was that the tree would be uh, unsightly with the uh, bittersweet removed, there would be dead patches, and that it would maybe be a better uh, better option would be to remove the tree and replace it. Another comment, we had planted a, a proposal for a maple trees along this, uh, this back. And this, this uh, suggestion was that maybe we would uh, try different varieties than just the, uh, just the maple. 
And this is the uh, large uh, Norway maple that's just off the proposed uh, edge of pavement um, that we initially felt uh, was a risky, risky, uh, in a risky location, and we proposed to remove that. Um, it's not it's a pretty tough tree, and there's a good chance it would survive. So uh, we have no issue with any of his recommend recommendations. We're glad to uh, work with him and not. Uh, uh, replace the spruce tree. We're glad to use whatever varieties um, uh, that he might uh, think be appropriate or would like to have in this area of Cape Elizabeth. And we're glad to uh, do all we can to uh, preserve that uh, Norway maple. Is this, does anyone have any questions while Peter is up here in regards to buffering and plants? Planting. No questions at this time for Peter? Okay. Sir. I think that's us. We'll turn it over uh, to you for any questions and oh. clarifications. Okay. Thank you very much, Beth. Thank you. All right. Um, this is scheduled for a public hearing. So at this time, there is anyone from the public that would like to come up and discuss this amendment, this uh, plan, please step forward. And seeing no one, I will now close the public hearing. And now I'm going to turn it to the board for any comments and discussion. Would anyone like to start with a comment or any discussions on this? Thank you, Karen. I'd like to go to Joe's point, and that is the ownership of the fence because based on the note that we have about buffering, those deciduous trees and the fence could be adequate if the fence is indeed the town's. Um, if the fence is not the town's, then do we need to go with more dense plantings? I know that sounds strange because the fence is there anyway, but is, is it ours to, to consider as part of the site plan? Okay, so you'd like to see the deed actually? I'd like to know that. whether. Okay, that's you. Well, I think that the, the four trees and the fence creates a really nice edge to that big lawn area. And it just seems like if you plant it all out really densely, the, I don't really see the purpose of that. For one thing, if you just have the four trees and the fence, you can go sit under there on a sunny day. I mean, it, it just it creates a nice area. So I would not want to see that whole south edge heavily planted and impenetrable. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it would be nice to know if the fence is ours or not. OK. Anyone else would like to know about that fencing? Yes. <coughs> yeah, the, uh, it seems to me that the problem is between the buffering that you expect in the town center between the town center and the basement residential or other zoning district as opposed to internally within the town center district and I um, personally would take a less restrictive view on the internal buffering as to its density and, and whatnot. I, I don't think it's appropriate to carve up with heavy, heavy dense um, landscaping among the various parcels. So I, I think I may be saying the same thing as Joe in a slightly different way, but I think the internal views are somewhat different than the town center looking outward to other zoning districts. As far as going uh, through a deed search on that fence, is that something that you find is necessary? Does it matter? If it was the neighbor's fence and they decided to take it down, do you think it is responsibility with our town center designs to then put up a thicker buffer. I think that might be some of the heart of the map. That or a fence. Be, it doesn't have to be. A, a thicker, some, a type of buffer. Yeah, it would compensate in some way, although if the, that particular butter chose to take the fence down, uh, I'm not sure I would be as concerned because they, 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 they would be doing this voluntarily. Perhaps they prefer the view of the library as opposed to a, a fence. Anyone? Elaine, thank you. I got the impression at the site walk 
that the town actually doesn't know the legal definition of that border and it hasn't had it surveyed. Um, I'd be interested to find out if that is correct. I'd be reluctant to have the town and the project go to the expense of doing a detailed survey and legal analysis of a property boundary just for that purpose. I think what really concerns us is visual screening. And my guess is we could create a sufficient barrier, perhaps by adding a couple of lower shrubbery things in front of those trees and sidestep the legal question and provide an effective visual screen that would sufficiently meet this. I would say, though, that I think that the buffering standard here has to do with use compatibility. So even though this isn't a frontage piece for the apartment next to it, if they are, in fact, incompatible uses, and they're certainly different uses, um, perhaps we would provide a little more buffering than we might in other areas. But I'd be reluctant to get into a legal issue if we don't need to. Henry, do you have any comment on that? If not, I have a question for Maureen. Um, Non-compatible use. I think that, um, when I think of that, I'm thinking that the lot next door is not town-centered zone. I'm always thinking, what is it zoned? Is it zoned differently? So could you please give an explanation on non-compatible uses? Yeah, I, I think it, it's always a struggle when we're talking about residential and non-residential. Uh, what I would again suggest, and it may not be, it may be a, a unanimous opinion, but in the town center, residential and non-residential uses are treated as compatible uses. We actually encourage mixed-use buildings where you have commercial and retail on the first floor and residential on the upper floors. And you know, if we really thought they were so incompatible, I doubt we'd be encouraging them in the same building. Uh, Keep in mind that the building next door is also a mixed-use building. It has a residential unit, but it also has garage-type activities in it. Uh, and, and the last piece to think about, and I understand that Board Member Quinn does not agree with me, but I did measure on the site plan, and the edge of the main parking lot to the, prop, the southern property line is 100 feet. And in that 100 feet would be the existing maple that you're proposing to keep, plus four new maples, even uh, not considering the fence. Um, your standard does factor in distance as uh, one of the issues to think about when you're dealing with buffering. And the town has made clear that if they come back and add parking to that lawn area, that would be the time you could really nail down the ownership of the fence, and whether we need to really build up that buffer more. So I don't think you're necessarily slamming the door if, if you take an interim step right now. But certainly you, you could look at additional buffering if you felt the need. It, it also appears, I just learned, that the fence was installed by the neighbor to the south. So we would assume that the fence is the neighbor's property. Oh, you do have that information in that? Okay. All right. Um, I was always of the opinion that um, though it is residential and one is library, that they were all the same compatible use. And I agree with Elaine. I hate to see us at this time <clears throat> spend more money to do a, a search on something when I do feel that because they are compatible uses that there is an adequate buffer. And I would actually have to show sign of hands if, if we want to do a, a more buffering than what is proposed. Does anyone want to add low shrubs or anything? I mean, what do you want to add? Does anyone have an opinion on adding more to what is already presented? No. No, okay. I want to take a quick look at the description of the town center to see if there's some kind of language in there, which I'm assuming we will find, that talks about mixed residential and commercial use. Okay. So we get and to the extent that there is that language, then I think Maureen makes a very good point. Let's see. And, and I, I, I and certainly there, it, it's the I agree with Joe that the trees make a nice inviting area. So you're saying to clutter. Sorry. You're saying that Microphone. You'll say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm pointing. See, it makes, 
A library is commercial. A library is commercial. No. So, um, uh, if I use the word commercial, I apologize. No, no. Compatible. <laughs> I, I mean, a library is pretty well a, a function of the town. I mean, it's sort of like integrated in. I, I don't see it as a something that people would try to hide, particularly behind a buffer. It looks like it's. When I looked at that site, it all looked even and spread. If you start putting heavy buffering in, it looks a little bit out of place. I mean, this is one time when I think people would like to have it a little bit more open rather than closed. Um, and the site looked quite, quite nice with, well, that drawing is not up there, but with the entrance. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 from my side, I wouldn't like to see it heavily buffered on where that fence is. Okay. Elaine, yes. Um, do we have uh, my understanding is that just in terms of intended use, as long as the getting the name of the building, um, Spurwing School Building. It seems to me that as long as the Spurwing School Building is being used only for storage, which I understand is the long-term plan, um, and there are other open areas on the site where there's lawn area, where there's garden area, for the most part, it seems to me that this area we're talking about is just going to be open and quiet. Not that I would prepare or propose to put any restriction that you could never do anything there. But I think we would have more of a question to talk about when there is a proposal either for the expansion of the parking or for the um, use of the Sperling School for some kind of active use that might make this an active yard. And that, again, might raise different questions for an adjacent residential structure. Um, I don't really think we need a note to that effect, but that makes me inclined to think that given the extent of openness and quiet, essentially quiet use of this part of the property, that we're probably okay. Okay, so we'll keep the buffering as it looks. The, the other thing I want to say about that Yes, I wanted to discuss that. It's a nice tree, and I think it would be nice if it could be preserved. If for some reason we're not successful in doing that and the construction does cause that tree to die, I wouldn't want any implication that it had to be replaced. Because in fact, I don't think we need it there. And I don't know if by saying existing tree to remain, that creates any obligation to replace it should it in fact die as a result of the construction. In order to make that clear, we can just add that to the condition of approval. Okay. That we they use reasonable efforts to preserve it, but if they're not successful, oh, then no. it's gone. Okay. I'm looking at the uh, condition of approval. It does say the existing Norway maple located on the southern edge of the main parking lot be preserved. So we're talking that tree preservation. Right. I, I think it would be a stretch for me to then say, well, if it died off, we need to replant. I'm, I'm just seeing that tree be preserved. So I think the language already might be there. Do you feel that? I mean, we can imagine. I would add some clarification just because the question has come up in the past that if there's a tree and it's required on plan, that if something happens to it, that it, there not be an implication because the tree died that something wrong was done in the construction. Because it sounds to me like the arborist is saying, looks like a healthy tree, it should make it, but it's going to use, lose, I think he said 40%. 40% of some part of the tree. And I know, I've always heard it, you can always, you can safely take off a third of a tree. But if it's more than a third, it's risking the tree. I just think it's safer to put a note that reasonable efforts will be made during construction oh, to preserve You might that. be doing the wording. You might want to make the motion then. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> can use the existing condition and just add a, set, a line at the very end that, you know, despite the best efforts the tree dies, it doesn't have to be replaced. We could do it that way, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anyone else have anything that they really wanted? Yes, Henry. Yeah, I was looking at these, uh, the signage, and I see the stop and the pedestrian, and, but I don't see a speed limit sign. Um, do you plan to have a speed limit sign on the site? Speed limit on site? Didn't necessarily plan to have that. Typically not in parking lots. 
Yeah, well, I hate to, to, to hop in on something that I've already brought up before and has been answered. But I, I looked at stopping distances at some stage. And anything under 12 to 15 miles an hour was pretty well instantaneous from a driver. However, anything over 20 starts to add up quite, quite considerably with the reaction time and the actual stopping time. So going back to the original design, I know this has gone through with the concave entrance se section. If somebody starts driving there at a higher speed than 15 miles an hour, there's quite a possibility of covering that 10 foot of entrance distance before the reaction time and the stop time of the thing. So I would have been, ha I would be happy if there was a speed limit in that site of 12 to 15 miles an hour. Now, most likely 99.999 reoccurring percent of the time people will drive at that. But just in case, you know, and I hate we're all not old in this particularly, but you know, as we, as we get older, and I've noticed that about myself, my reaction times are a little bit slower, and you can cover quite a bit of distance in that second or two before you react to somebody moving quickly towards you. So I would like to see some sort of signage about speed limit. Does anyone want to add to that? Um, agree, disagree, or? Gee, Henry, I, I hate to be the one to say that. That's all right. Disagree, because um, I'm mentally thinking about uh, the whole the campus, the school campus, and there are uh, signs about speeding as you go through the streets in the high school. It reminds you, uh, the middle school, there are signs that remind you what the speed limit is. But once you get into parking, I've never... No, this is not parking, I'm sorry. But you well, know, your entrance up to the road, up to the, up to the drive-in. I mean, the parking is something entirely different. The entrance of the concave well, section of that headed towards the door. It, anything under 12 to 15 miles an hour is fine, but anything above that, and I know it's not very difficult to drive it over that speed, the di stopping distances become much larger. And I, you know, that's all I'm saying. I agree with you about stopping distance, about we don't want people speeding. Um, I'm just in my mind thinking, I know when we talked about uh, Seesaw, their market, there was a concern that um, students, perhaps at the end of the day, if you recall that conversation, may be trying to save a second by going right through. And there was a concern about speeding in their parking area. And we never really discussed. And so I kind of, anyone want to jump anyway, in? <laughs> I personally would like to see a speed limit. OK, yes. And, I understand Henry's concern, um, and I understand why he's concerned, but it's a parking lot, too much signage. People, people uh, have a hard time with too much signage. They don't, it's hard, you gotta keep things to a minimum to get people to realize, to, look, to read it all. I mean, so I, it's a parking lot, it's not an access road. And I, I just don't see the need for a speed limit sign. Well, actually, I don't see it as a parking lot, that particular section. I see it as an entrance. Later on, it becomes a parking lot. And well, as you move around there to the left of it, it becomes a parking lot. But not as you drive down it. It's an access road. Yeah. Is that the That's Anyone my else? comment. Yeah. On it. You've got the justice. I won't take it too badly if it's turned down, <laughs> but you know. Anyone else? We, we have pedestrian signs, so people should have caution looking for people to be walking. And there are pedestrian crosswalk signs. Okay, is there going to be striping in that area? Where's the cross? There is striping of a crosswalk. Uh, All of those things, both of those things should show, slow people down. They, Oh, I'm sure it will slow people down. I just don't would like to see them keep down below that 12 to 15 miles per hour. And then everything's, everything's, I, I, I agree with you. And there is a sign on the campus that says 15 miles an hour as you go into the middle school Panko. And some people drive 15 miles, some a little lower, and some a little bit more. It's one of those things that, yes, I agree with you. Safety is the first. 
and well, you would so assume that they people would realize when all these children are about in cars because this is a parking lot. I, so. I'm absolutely in agreement with you. I'm just saying that you know um, precaution is slightly better than a cure afterwards. That's all. In comment or about the town. I mean, no, it's okay. I mean, I am not hearing from the if, it, if it's Evan, not if it's not a majority two. thing, then I. Then I'm I, not sure if it's one of those things that if the town really felt it was necessary, they could go back without amending this. Oh, I'm sure they could. Would they have to amend this plan to put in a sign? So if it, they felt it was a problem, then we can remember this conversation and remember that Henry had warned us. Well, I hope it never comes up. In actual fact, that it's <laughs> never brought up. But, you know, I just. Perhaps. I, I'm not feeling compelled at this moment, that's okay. and I'm that's not fine. seeing a lot of... That's fine. I mean, okay. I think it's a minority view, a very minority view, by the looks of it, so I will not push it, but, you know. I appreciate comments, though. I always want to hear from the board. As far as the rest of the plan goes, does anyone have any comments on this? No? And if there's no comments, then... Um, I do appreciate that we worked with our um, with the members, our big warden. It was a suggestion from our town manager, and it was a very good one because uh, he had some very good suggestions. I'm glad to hear that the town, the applicants, will be open to any suggestions. Um, it's a beautiful tree that um, that would be nice if it could be saved. Um, we'll see what the future holds. Overall, I, uh, the plans look very good. Um, I think they're wonderful. I hope this does pass and keeps going forward and actually will be built. If no one has any other comments, then I will take a motion. I'll just make the comment. I'd just like to make the comment that I think it's an, a beautiful plan. And I think it's going to be an asset to the center of town. Yes. Thank you. Our motion maker is reading. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking for the one that had, that talks specifically about that Norway maple. This one, Norway maple. Okay. Number five. Are we ready to make a motion? Yes. yes. I will accept the motion. Yes. I have a motion to make. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. The town of Cape Elizabeth is proposing an addition 10,855 square feet slash renovation of the Thomas Memorial Library located at 6 Scott Dyer Road, which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Two, the town engineer has recommended that additional information be added to the plans. Three, the current library includes the Spurling School Building and the Site Plan application does not include a reuse of the building after the library addition slash renovation is completed. Four, the school campus lot on which the library is located is currently regulated by a site location permit issued by the Department of Environmental Protection. Five, the town center design standards include pedestrian lighting requirements which had previously been implemented with a town center style light fixture. Six, adjacent to the proposed main parking lot are existing trees which should be evaluated for preservation and incorporated into the buffering for the site. Seven, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of the Thomas Memorial Library addition 10,855 square feet slash renovation located at 6 Scott Dyer Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated July 7, 2014. Two, that the use of the Spurwing School is a temporary library space during construction of the Thomas Memorial Library addition slash renovation, and then as a municipal storage, and any change from these uses will require site plan review. Three, that the town obtain an amendment to the DEP site location permit prior to construction. Four, that all the pole mounted lights in the parking lots use the town center style light fixtures. Five, that reasonable efforts during construction 
be made to preserve the existing Norway maple located on the southern edge of the main parking lot. The plan shall be augmented to include a preservation plan that one, precludes the use of equipment or storage materials within the drip line of a, the tree, except where the parking lot will be constructed. Two, includes pruning of the affected roots, and three, includes limbing of the tree to create a 15 foot ground clearance. Um, continuing in point five, in the event, however, that after following these procedures, the tree does not survive, um, the town is not required to replace the tree. Six, that the minimum size spruce growing between the medium sized spruce growing between the main parking lot and Holman Road and infested with bittersweet be removed and a new tree be planted in the same area. Seven, that the applicant consider substituting the proposed maple trees with the following species subject to availability black gum, ironwood, hornbeam, shagbark, hickories, and magnolias and eight, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans have been revised and submitted to the town planner for review. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next item on our agenda is the Well 44 seat restaurant site plan amendment. Jason Williams is requesting an amendment to the previous site plan approval for the Well 44 seat restaurant located at 21 Wells Road to reconfigure the six space employee parking area. The planning board granted site plan approval at the May 22, 2014 meeting. When the restaurant opened in June, the property owner objected to the layout of the employee parking. The application will be reviewed for compliance under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulation. And this will be heard um, in the following format. The town planner will provide an overview after which the applicant will summarize their requested change. The board should then determine by consensus if we do have sufficient information to consider this amendment tonight. The public is then welcome to comment on the amendment and after public comment, the board may then begin this to begin discussion including deciding if we do need a site walk or a public hearing on this item, including with a motion for the board to consider. Maureen. Oh, yes, I forgot. I had a note to myself. Carol Ann. Okay. I will recuse myself from hearing this item. Yes, I'm sorry. I had a note to myself. Here we go. Now at this time, Maureen, will start with you. And then we'll start with okay, you. so uh, the board saw this plan at the May 22nd meeting. And because it's so very recent in your memory, it seemed that you could process this amendment without sending it back through the usual process of workshop and then regular meeting. So for that meeting, for that reason, it's, it's on tonight's agenda because you've seen it less than two months ago. Um, and what the applicant has done is um, taken an area that has set, been set aside for employee parking and reconfigured the parking so it's, it sits a little differently on the field. Uh, the only issue that staff is asking you to consider and not to, um, not making an issue, but just make sure you're aware of it is, under the off-street parking standards, a parking space is supposed to be nine by 18 in size and the aisle that you use to access the parking space is supposed to be 24 feet wide. Uh, the applicant's proposal is a parking lot in a field, and they are gonna be laying a thin gravel pad 
to support the parking. The gravel will be large enough to accommodate the spaces and a 12-foot aisle. So, in theory, half of the aisle would not have gravel on it. So, that's it for me. Okay. Would you like to provide an additional summary to our summary? Sure. My name is Jen Mowers, presenting. Um, so, we would like to amend the well site plan regarding our employee parking. Um, currently, the condition is 40 feet in by 12 feet wide with gravel. Uh, we would like to not have gravel over the entire area um, because we do see future potential in farming in that area. And as we've um, said before, we like to make the least amount of impact as possible on the farm. Um, we've found so far that with what we have now is um, adequate enough and safe enough uh, as far as the cars being in there is, uh, can, for traction uh, to get in and out. Um, and if for some reason, you know, the weather like today rains, uh, we usually just park our cars up in the main parking area because um, we don't have as many customers coming into the well since we are primarily outside seating. Um, and yeah, we, I think that's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, at this point, I just want to ask the board, do you feel you have sufficient information to consider this, or do you have some questions before we go on? Lane. I have a question, I have a dimension question, if that question can be answered, then I think I'm following. Certainly, yes. Um, okay, we're talking about a 12 foot wide gravel surface, but it looks, I'm not exactly sure what that 12 feet is measured from, um, and whether the area where a car can actually pass is 24 feet or what the distance is. There's a sort of a light line. It appears to be something called end of power field, and then a gap, and then another line that appears to be related to the gravel farm pond. I guess my, my concern here is um, whether we have at, in our discretion the ability to simply say, it says you have to have 24 feet, but we're only going to require you to have 12. It seems to be a fairly mandatory requirement. But if, in fact, there is a 12-foot gravel way and an adjacent part of, part of the aisle, which is not gravel, and putting together the gravel part of the aisle and the non-gravel part of the aisle, we come up with 24 feet, then we're not, we're complying with the standard um, so that's my concern. Because I think it makes a lot of sense. And, I'm all, and I think it makes a lot of sense to preserve as much of the field on the far side of the parking as we can. I, I know Maureen wants to speak to this. When I was looking at it, I also saw that um, there is a section in our ordinance that says parking areas shall be designed so that vehicles will not back into a street. And so I was thinking, well, there goes your, it's not a two-way parking. So you come in, you park, and you're always going in the same direction. It's not two-way. But I'll let Maureen now answer it. You know, in light of the board's recent decisions, um, I have a renewed uh, commitment to making sure the I's and T's are taught, I's are dotted and T's are dropped. And in the off-street parking section, it says that the aisle has to be 24 feet wide but it doesn't specify what the surface of the aisle has to be. And if you were talking about a 12-foot wide gravel surface that was framed by a tree line, then I would argue that you would be struggling meeting the 24-foot wide standard. But this entire area is open, grassy field. So I think you could argue that there's at least 24 feet. If not, I mean, you could back up for probably 100 feet if you had to, because it's all grass in that area. So, um, and it, it doesn't, this doesn't mean that you don't have a 24 foot wide aisle. It just means that 12 of it is grass and 12 of it is gravel. So maybe we could indicate on the plan, 24 foot aisle, 12 feet gravel, 12 feet grass, because it's, 
It's unclear to me. There is a flower field, and at some point, cultivation, I assume, of that field could come quite close, and we would want to make sure that there was 24 feet of non-cultivated area behind for those cars to back out in. So well, you're probably not going to cultivate, though, where cars are going to back out and run over the flowers. Unless you conclude that they'd only need 12 feet to do that. But you don't, you need 20, I mean, when cars back out, that's how much room they take. So if you plant up to their thinking that... The but our, sta our ordinance requires 24 feet. And I think we can do what the owner intends to do with the property and still... The implication here was it says 12 foot wide gravel surface. I think we just add 12 foot wide grass surface. And that then becomes our aisle. Okay, I agree with that. We can certainly do that so that it, it does keep with the ordinance, and I'm still thinking that where all the parking cannot back into a street, and I wouldn't see these employees trying to so much no. back into Wells Road to get out. I would actually see them, and so it's still all going in the same direction. Well, but it's, it's, they are 90 degree angle site spots, so one way or two way they're required to be 24 feet wide because they're 90 degree angles. Okay. I'm comfortable then with that note that Elaine is mentioning, putting it in um, on the plan or a condition of approval. You want it on the plan? I think it'd be better to have it on the plan. Okay. Yeah. Henry? What happens if you angle the uh, bottom instead of having a right angle that them, um, you know, took 12, 15, Degrees and you can't back out. <coughs> well, well that, they make no, it you easier. can't it's make it easy. Yeah. You can't yeah. leave and leave facing traffic easily. Yeah, they will be perfectly able to pull in, back out, and exit in forward direction on the well road. I, I see no problem whatsoever. They, they have the adequate space of indicating the gravel portion. Right, I think they certainly can use that parking area so that they're not backing into wells. I don't have an issue with that. If we want to I just agree. add the note that Elaine is mentioning to the plan, we certainly can. Um, would that then go into the motion so that a note be added? And yeah. Would you like to make that motion again then? Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Excuse me. I am jumping the gun here. We are, yes, I'm very sorry about that. Okay. So we, this was actually under, do we have enough information? I still need to ask, does the board, we've, we, go, we went a little bit further, so my apologies. Does the board have any other questions on whether or not they have sufficient information to consider this? Then do we have a consensus that we are, we have, okay, so that's. Now then, the public. Would anyone from the public like to come and discuss this item? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Any other comments before I ask for a motion? Seeing none, Elaine, would you? Thank you very much. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Jason Williams is requesting an approval to the previous site plan approval for the well of 44 seat wet restaurant located at 21 Wells Road to reconfigure the six space employee parking area, which requires review under section 19.9 site plan regulations. The application substantially complies with section 19.9 site plan regulations. Get that. Sub sub oh, I'm area. sorry, after regulations, that was a typo. Yeah. And could you please pull the microphone down? Uh, you're okay. gonna sorry. Thank you. It's um, just a period so after regulations. After regulations, a period. Oh, okay. Subject to the submission of an information referenced in two above? No, no, that was the typo. Oh, that's could... the typo, so just stop with regulation. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. So, point two reads, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Jason Williams for an amendment to the previous site plan approval for the well, a 44-seat restaurant located at 21 Wells Road, to reconfigure the six-space employee parking area being approved, subject to the following condition, that a note 
be added to the plan that a, a 12 foot wide grass surface um, is included as part of the parking lot entry aisle. Do you want to make it ungravel rather than grass? Because with employees, you're going to have grass. There, right? Does anyone have any comments on the motion then? Well, I need a second, you're right. Anyone like to second this and then we can... Okay, Joe. Um, is there a comment, Henry, on the motion? No, I was just saying maybe you should leave... Maybe you should leave the word grass out because sometimes there'll be grass there, sometimes there won't. So maybe just rather than ungraveled or non-graveled or something rather than, I mean, it's just a bit too specific when you say grass, that's all that's a minor point. I see your point, Elaine. I, that, I'm happy to accept that. Okay. You got that? All right then. And so how are you going to work that? You so, the note foot wide be added to the plan an additional 12 foot wide portion of the aisle, um, ungraveled portion. Okay, hold on a second. 12 foot wide. Uh, Maureen just Additional 12-foot wide, wide surface. surface. There you go. Um, be added to the parking lot aisle um, that does not require gravel. Okay. Or not required to be graveled. Thank you. Okay. Do I need that seconded, that amendment to... Okay. Uh, would you like to second that that yes. change? Thank you, Joe. Okay. And we've had the motion. Uh, any discussion? So, no further discussion on the amendment. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. That Thank has you. passed. Next on our item on our agenda is Cardinal Lane Private Road Extension. Susan Gabriel is requesting a private road extension and resource protection permit to extend Cardinal Lane to a proposed new lot. The application will be reviewed for compliance with the Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 16, Private Road Standards, and Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Permit Standard. This item will be addressed in the following format. The town plan will provide a summary of the project, after which the applicant will introduce the project. The public is then welcome to comment on completeness, after which the board will determine completeness. The public is then welcome to comment on the project, and after public comment, the board may begin discussions, including deciding whether or not a site walk is necessary or a public hearing should be scheduled, and we'll conclude that with a motion for the board to consider. Marine. Okay. Uh, this project, I believe, is in the RB, RB district, and um, the Cardinal, Cardinal Lane is a private road that was built off of uh, Cross Hill Road. It collects, it connects its utility lines off of Cross Hill Road, and this is the third extension of Cardinal Lane. So this actually is a planned development by the owner of the property where Cardinal Lane is being extended and it's been laid out over time to create access to new lots. Uh, in your package tonight you have comments from staff and there have been some comments about the need for more stormwater work and I just wanted to take a moment to talk to the board about the difference between completeness and adequacy. It, it, the first thing is it's important for the board to realize is that you're the board. So staff gives you information, but the decision is completely yours. But there has always been an understanding that there is a difference between information being submitted and information being submitted so that it is adequate to meet the standards. What that means is you can determine an item to be complete and still say I need more information or I need better information or I need you to change the information because it's not working right now. 
uh, right, what you have before you right now is a recommendation from staff that the application is complete, but that there is more information that's needed. Uh, I did also want to note that, you know, the, the review of plans inherently includes revisions. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, if someone submitted something to you that didn't need to be revised, that would be very surprising. Uh, and then I do have a, just a tiny little gift. Uh, there has been some question about what is an appropriate amount of wetland alteration to be requested. And uh, the staff in my office and I have worked on a inventory of all the resource protection permits that have been granted by the planning board since the new wetland regulations were adopted in May of 1990. So uh, I have this chart to give out to you. I want to say it is a draft. There's a few little things we still need to tinker with. But I, I'm assuming it would be a little useful for you tonight. So just pass it out. <clears throat> um, just to clarify, the, this property, the subject property, is an RB? Uh, it is RB. RB. And I was stumbling because I thought it was RA, and the whole area was RA, and then it was zoned for RB. And the intent was to take large lots and encourage clustering. Um, but even if you're in an RB district, you can create one 80,000 square foot lot at a time. And I know it's in our materials, but um, mm -hmm. can you quickly remind us how much of the wetland is to be altered? I believe this wetland application is for 4,200 square feet of wetland alteration. Okay. 4,220. 4,220, and it's RP2. Um, in the chart, you will see that there is some places where we show alteration of RP1. Um, even though RP1 is a very strictly regulated zone, there are some things that you are allowed to do in it. And one of the things we do allow is for someone to reconstruct an existing road. So even though you can't build a new road in an RP1, you can actually take an existing road and rebuild it, and that reconstruction could actually expand the area of the road, so that would result in a wetland alteration. And I just thought that this might be useful information for you, but certainly you don't have to refer to it if it's not useful. Thank you very much. OK, at this time, it's the applicant to present this item to the board. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Mitchell. I represent uh, Suzanne Gabriel, who is here this evening, uh, for the uh, third and final extension of Cardinal Lane. Uh, this application is for uh, both a private, it's an amended private road application, uh, as well as a resource protection permit application. Uh, <coughs> this slide is a uh, location plan and zoning map. Uh, this is the proposed property. Uh, it's a 9.3 acre parcel, uh, which lies between Wells Road and Cross Hill Road. And this little lake here is uh, Cardinal Lane that exists today. Uh, and it is, the yellow represents the zoning district, which is the RB district. This is an aerial map uh, of the property. Uh, this is Cross Hill Road, and this is Wells Road here, and Cardinal Lane is located right there. And as you can see, the site is uh, mostly wooded with a, a mix of hardwood and softwood trees. And this is uh, a plan, uh, your sheet one in your packet, which is the existing conditions plan. Uh, it shows Cardinal Lane extending uh, to its current uh, length, which is approximately 350 linear feet. Um, there are two residences that have access off of Cardinal Lane. Um, and uh, Suzanne Gabriel's uh, home is located right here. It has access off of Wells Road. And this is the, uh, this is the subject property. 
there is an air, a shaded area located in the, the bottom of the slope, which is, has been uh, characterized as RB, RP2 wetland, Alfric, uh, delineated, delineated the wetlands uh, in the spring of this year. Uh, quick clarification. Are those two properties part of the Cross Hill subdivision? Yeah. No. No, they're not. <clears throat> there are no RP1 wetlands. Peter, I can't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you said there was also RP1 land. Uh, no. This is a. Actually, uh, you know, Cardinal Lane, uh, as you can see by this photograph here, it rises uh, in elevation. There's a high point approximately in this location. Then it falls. And the wetland is located in the lower elevations of the property where it sort of flattens out. And this is a photograph. Uh, it's difficult to see, but uh, there is a photograph in your booklet. Uh, showing the wetland vegetation. It's primarily uh, uh, ferns and wetland grasses and moss uh, with a few red maple, white pine, and a couple gray birch. Uh, the wetland does uh, settle in this area here, and then it does flow uh, in this direction here towards the adjacent property. This is an overall plan, overall site plan that shows the extension of the uh, Cardinal Lane. It's, um, as I mentioned, it is extending, uh, this is the final leg of uh, the extension and it is done to provide access to this lot here, which is called lot four on your plan. Um, I don't know if you remember it from the workshop meeting, we talked about the master plan uh, back in 2001 when uh, Cardinal Lane uh, had its first uh, phase. Uh, we prepared and presented to the planning board a master plan uh, that showed basically this uh, dividing this land into five pieces, parcels. Uh, Suzanne's is lot one, lot two, lot three. Uh, this is lot four, and the balance of the land uh, would be, if Suzanne decides to do it, would be lot five. And this is uh, uh, the whole configuration here is very consistent with that master plan that we presented to the planning board. And this road is adequate to provide access to lot five? It's a private road built to private road standards. But in terms of the geometry, it could serve lot five? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it's 22 feet wide. Uh, there is a, uh, a turnaround, a hammerhead turnaround designed at the end, uh, designed uh, to uh, standards. I have met with Bob Malley as well as the fire chief um, to talk about the road and to talk about uh, fire suppression requirements. <clears throat> so lot four uh, is an 80,000 square foot lot. Um, the house it will probably be located uh, off of the turnaround somewhere in this location. Here is a desirable building lot. Uh, this is an enlargement uh, of the, the roadway. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, hammerhead is designed to minimize or avoid the wetland impact. Uh, there will be a driveway off of the hammerhead to serve lot four. The wetland impacts uh, uh, really are unavoidable to, to provide access to lot four because of the, the perimeter configuration of the property. 
Uh, this is difficult to see, but this is your grading and utilities plan in your packet. Uh, we will extend the water. Uh, there's a uh, public water main. Uh, there is a uh, public sanitary force main that will be extended, as well as underground electric telephone and cable utilities will be extended to the end of Cardinal Lane. Um, we will be providing a new fire hydrant uh, roughly in this location uh, where the existing 8-inch water main uh, ends. And uh, we have, I just wanted to mention that uh, in terms of the resource protection permit, uh, in your, in your packet, Exhibit 10, uh, there are several pages that, uh, that pertain to the resource protection permit. In one of the pages, we outlined uh, the measures that we took to minimize and avoid the wetland uh, area. The first is we designed the side slopes, uh, where the side slopes are uh, somewhat steep. We designed them to two and a half to one uh, to try to minimize um, the wetlands. We, as I mentioned, we located the turnaround in an area to avoid the wetland. Uh, we have proposed a location of, for the driveway to provide access to lot four in an area that would avoid the wetlands. And we've uh, provided an 18-inch culvert uh, underneath the roadway to connect the two wetlands hydrologically. Uh, we've also added some uh, wetland plantings on the side slopes on either side of the, uh, of the roadway. Uh, this, this is uh, the site detail sheet, uh, the road profiles, uh, we have, uh, we can get into this at a, you know, after, after the vote, uh, but we have uh, received AMAC's comments, uh, and with the exception of uh, number three on their letter, uh, which asked for uh, pre-stormwater drainage calculations, uh, we've addressed all of the other details. They're fairly minor. Um, we've added a couple details to address their comments, and we will be, in our next submission, we will be preparing the pre-stormwater calculations. So that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, now, at this time, uh, we do need to find out if this is complete. So if anyone from the public has any comments about whether or not the board has enough information in front of them to deem this complete, now's the time to please come up to the podium. And seeing no one, uh, okay, I will close that part of the hearing. Now, the board, do you feel that you have enough information in front of you now to deem this complete? Okay. Then would anyone like to make a motion on completeness? Carol, yeah. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Suzanne Gabriel for a private road extension and resource protection permit to extend Cardinal Lane to a proposed new lot be deemed complete. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Thank you. Um, then, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of completeness? This has been deemed complete, so we will continue on then. Um, does anyone from the public now want to talk about this project? Seeing no one, I will close that part of the public hearing. And I will ask the board, do you have any questions for the applicant? I have a question. Yes, Joe, just re use your microphone. Please. Um, so my question, John, is uh, I can see how you very carefully avoided just have you avoided disturbing as much of the RP2 wetland as possible. If you were to access this lot five, 
would you have to go through the wetland or do you do you have enough beyond the hammerhead to get into that next lot? I mean the lot? future future yeah. lot. No, we have we have enough uh, road lineage or road road frontage to install a driveway and not impact any additional wetland. Okay. We've we've looked at that. Thank you. Yes, Elaine. Um, two questions. You talked about this being the final extension, um, but the information that uh, we have from our staff say that the remaining land could, in fact, be divided into two additional lots. Is that correct? Or yeah. Um, so in Maureen's memo, that comment was made, uh, but we have, Suzanne does not have any intention on creating any additional lots over and above that, the single lot five. But you're not precluding that and aren't proposing that that be prohibited? It would be, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it in the current location. Um, in the current location of the plan, we would not be able to extend uh, Cardinal Lane because of this property line. And so one of the suggestions here, which I didn't quite understand, was that the full 50 feet width at the end of the road be left for further extension. Um, is that something you've considered? And I'm not sure which full 50 feet we're talking about here anyway. So I suppose it's partly a question for Maureen and partly a question for John. So shall I go first? Yeah. So I'm not, ex I'm not proposing that there be more development of this property. I, I have to be realistic that land in Cape Elizabeth is very valuable. And whenever someone is presented with that opportunity, they're usually tempted to do it. And, and the reality is that um, in five years, there's no guarantee that Mrs. Mrs. Gabriel will still be the owner of the property. Correct. So in five years, whoever is the owner of the property may decide, I still have enough land, I can divide that lot into two lots instead of just keeping it as one lot. Um, and at that point, that's when people start to get um, uh, creative in not a good way about how to create access. So uh, this property owner, in my opinion, has been very responsible in laying out a reasonable way for these new lots that have been created to have access and that we should preserve the ability of Cardinal Lane to be further extended south into the lot until there is no more potential for development. So obviously one of the options which you kind of hinted at was to close down further development with some kind of deed restriction. The other option would be that where Cardinal Lane dead ends, right now, that's a 50-foot wide right-of-way, and 25 feet of it is taken up with the proposed new lot. If you were to pull back that lot line to the corner of the 50-foot wide right-of-way, you could imagine that lot, that 50-foot wide right-of-way, being further extended in the future. It doesn't even have to be pulled back the entire length of that lot. It could just be pulled back to the corner and then make sure there's an opportunity for a curve so that you could extend, extend Cardinal Lane further if a future property owner wanted to create access for another lot. So that leads to another question. Not for the, the physical location of lot form, the map says it's 80,053 square feet, which doesn't leave much flexibility. However, a note on the, on the other part of the plan says that it's 80,247 square feet. Those are inconsistent, and obviously they need to say the same thing, but there's not a lot of ability to shave something off of that. Well, but to be fair, the applicant owns not only the proposed lot, but all the other right. land. Right, so it could be reasonable. So there's actually a tremendous amount of flexibility to move. I mean, I don't think there's any magic to the way those lot lines are right now. And if you were to create some kind of gentle curve at the end and you just have to pick it up somewhere else, um, it's more of a mathematical problem than I think an insurmountable, not enough land problem. 
And I, I guess the other comment I have is, is you said that there is no way to get to this lot without crossing the wetlands. It looks to me like that's not entirely true. Um, and I'm wondering if there isn't the possibility of access from Wells Road. Now, I can understand why you might prefer not to do that, but to say that there is no other way to access this property, I'm not sure that's entirely true. Not that it would necessarily be a better idea, but I think we have to be thorough in our examination of alternatives. Oh, I um, Essentially, like, 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 the exist, it, it, providing access off of the existing driveway. If I could just respond to that, there, okay. it is true that you can provide a driveway off the end of Cardinal Lane without impacting the wetland. No, I'm saying you could provide access to this lot four off of Wells Road and not, true. not true. impact the wetland at all. Going in the other direction. Going, just coming into the property the other direction. I can see obvious reasons why you might have chosen not to do that, but to say you couldn't have, I think is not 100% correct. Yes, that's true. Yes. And I'm not sure it's a sufficiently valuable wetland that we would want to press that point. It's just another um, you'd, if you'd like to speak, you, Suzanne, you can certainly come up to the podium and speak, or speak, speak through your applicant. Well, I, That's I representative. This. Ellen is my neighbor. She owns the lot, right? Three? Lot, lot three? No, no, no lot. just south of. And yeah. we share uh, the driveway from Wells Road in to uh, both of our lots as a shared access. And when I started the Cardinal Lane part of it, it was to preserve our end of uh, the, the way it was. And so this is as far as I would want to go and could ever afford to go. I, I road, even if it wasn't shared, would be like way cost prohibitive to a private landowner like me. <laughs> so. Thank you. Um, Carol Ann. We're talking about Lot 5, which isn't even really under consideration and how we would access that. I was talking about Lot 4. Well, I know you were, but it started out with the discussion of Lot 5 and the fact it could be subdivided. And the fact that it could be subdivided if Suzanne didn't own the property five, ten years from now. Uh, and the option available to someone who may own this property in the future is to look at access from Wells Road, as well as look at access from Cardinal Lane. And, and so I think we're getting bogged down into what might happen and, and losing focus on what is happening. Um, Just uh, Elaine, go ahead. No, no. I, I guess what I would say is the planning board is required to consider minimizing wetland impact and balancing it with other options. There is another option here that's not being mentioned. We might look at that other option being adding a third access, not for a future lot, yeah. but for this lot, lot four, coming all the way from Wells Road. That's an option, and I think we're obligated to consider that option. My inclination is that that would end up with more paving, more, dis more disturbance of a residential area, and that even though this 4,000 square foot figure is a lot of wetlands, looking at the other wetland impacts that Maureen has given us, it still on balance makes more sense. But I think for us to ignore that option doesn't have us looking at all the things we should look at. And I do know that we will be discussing whether or not we want to take a site walk. Right. That would be something that I, I get the feeling that we'll probably end up taking that site walk so that we can review the landscape. Um, it, it, probably in the plans, but I didn't closely look at them as far as topography. 
I don't know if this is flat or if there's. Yeah. Those are the issues we also. Well, the other consider. the other thing is that you know we didn't delineate the entire 9.3 acres of wetland. We delineated the area where we knew the road was going to be placed. If I'm not mistaken, there are additional wetlands in the area coming off of your driveway, correct? Yeah. Surrounding the farm. So we would be impacting, if I'm not mistaken, we would be impacting wetland coming in off of Wells Road. Okay. So that would be helpful to see. And obviously, if there's an area that's ponded, we'll see that it's a wetland there. So that would be something that it sounds like we'll take the sidewalk and we'll be able to see if there is. Um, as far as the information that was presented to us from staff in regards to resource protection permits, uh, I just uh, quickly went down and looked at all the RP2 um, permits that have been issued. Uh, in total, there were um, 27, excuse me, 26, can't do my math, 26 in total under just RP2. So I'm just pulling out the RP2, and there was 26. Seven of those were greater than the proposed 4,220 uh, square feet that will be proposed to be altered. And of those uh, remaining, two of them were at least 4,000 square feet greater, a total of nine out of 26 that is least, at least 4,000 or greater that will be altered. Um, so Elaine, I think that goes to a comment that you said that this is not out of uh, the range of something that has been done. And uh, some of these um, 14,000 square feet for a private access way. Um, also, there was another one, striking one, 10,000 for a driveway. Um, so some of these are 15,000 for a road. So when I look at this, um, I agree, we do not want to uh, quickly jump on board and just say, let's just alter that, it's fine. I, I, but I believe that we have been um, very cautious about how much we fill and, and where we do the fill. I believe the applicant is coming before us and trying to present um, that we are doing the best to um, use land and use the land uh, wisely and try not to alter as much as that we need to alter. That's my thoughts on this, but I would look to the board for any other thoughts about the wetlands, or we can have this discussion after the site walk, whatever people feel is necessary. I would like to have a site walk before getting deeper into discussion. Okay, that sounds Without good. seeing something that's hard to discuss. Okay, so I, it sounds like um, as far as altering the wetland for the proposed road, or looking at coming in on a different angle, we would need the site walk. I think the site walk will probably answer a lot of questions. But do we have any other questions or comments in regards to the plan other than those two? And you... Uh, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, just kind of picking up on what Maureen mentioned, is there any magic to the size of this leg, uh, the south leg? going back towards Wells Road? The, the, only, uh, the only, the reason why it's that wide is, is to get the 80,000 square feet. Um, so it could be, you could drop that line and push it. could be that. narrower. Yeah. Is, is that what you're... Yeah. yeah. That's it, what I'm it, it could, but it would have to then, um, you know, continue its length to get the 80,000. You know, the other thing I can do is to look at, I think Maureen suggested this, look at um, this line located right here uh, to maybe the first 50 feet to angle it down to the corner of the 50 foot right of way so that, you know. Exactly, John. If and when. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't anticipate it being uh, extended anymore, but if it should, then we could put a curve in Cardinal Lane. Yeah, it just seems like it would be a big advantage to uh, the applicant if we knew that the rest of the site could be accessed without any further right. uh, revision of the wetlands. Yes. You really just want to have the 50-foot plug. 
So you can, you can bring the extension and that's how it yeah. fits in there is irrelevant as long as the plug is, is there. Mr. John, as you talk about, about 325 feet of yard and fill, is that yes. starting just past the driveway? That's just within the wetland area. So That's all. Just within the wetland area. Not, not right. The the uh, the resource the zoning ordinance asked for the quantity okay. of fill. And that's just in the shape. Correct. Any other comments? Um, I do like the suggestions from Joe in regards because um, we do look long term. We do always think that if it's a possibility, then we have to address that possibility. So I, I would um, suggest, unless the board, other board members, we have three now that are suggesting that we do look towards the future, that perhaps this could be divided into a six lot, a six lot. So unless anyone else has any comments about that, OK. The only um, other comment I would make is um, on the signing block. I always like to see chair instead of chair, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Anybody else? Schedule then, sidewalk? Yes. At this time, let's schedule that sidewalk. When do we have to have it? What's our, what are, deadlines are we working with, Maureen? Um, meeting next meeting is August nineteenth. Yes. And We're planning on submitting for next month's right board meeting. It's August first is the submission deadline for the August August nineteenth meeting. So if the applicant was going to have the benefit of the site walk before they submit. Um, are you thinking weekday evenings at this point? Weekday mornings? Either one. Typically in the summer you look more weekday than weekend. Yes. Okay, so there's, I, I saw a yell, let's not do the weekend. Good. Uh, morning or evening better? I like morning. I was gonna say we could be nice to Henry and do an evening one. <laughs> um, I'll wear my mosquito mask. You know, do you want to do a morning this week or, we, I mean, we've got the 17th is Thursday, the 18th is Friday, and all next week, Monday is the 21st through Friday the 25th. Next week would be better. Next, next week, week would be better. better. Is there a day of the week that would be better in the morning for everyone? I can't Monday. do Monday or Tuesday. I can't do Monday or Tuesday. No Monday or Tuesday. No Tuesday or Thursday. Okay, so we're talking Wednesday it's, or Friday it's like morning. We're talking Wednesday. Wednesday the 23rd. In the morning? What yeah. time in the morning? Early. Early. You gotta put a number on that. I think Henry said 7.30. <laughs> he was first one at the last. 7.30 works for me. 7.30? 7.30. Okay. Does that work for you? So that's Wednesday, July 23rd at 7.30? 7.30. Wear your, uh, don't wear shorts. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, you need to dress appropriately. That means long pants and, yeah. Okay. Meet down now, by. Do we want to, yeah. John, would you suggest we meet at the end of Cardinal Lane? Yeah. It's very thick, but there's a way in. Uh, if we meet at the end of Cardinal Lane, will we be able to, or should we, um, I know people want to see the Wells Road entrance will we be able to walk over or is it just too wet will we actually have to be moving our vehicles I think you, you will be able to walk over okay to Wells Road is that what you have? I, I believe that there, there was yes or else you need to Wells Road and walk down the driveway that's an easier access oh we do could do that uh, park in the driveway could we park in the driveway okay so meet at the end of the driveway at at Wells Road. Like, you might have to step up if, if you want to make a comment. Okay. Well, there has been a request to see what it looks like at the Wells Road. If there was ever in the future when somebody else could possibly own this land that they may wish to connect to a potential lot five and six. So there is that request. And I just don't know how wet 
this area is if we meet down on this end can we actually get back to Wells Road or is it so wet isn't it the brush rather than the wetness John? Mm -hmm. you want to see Cardinal yeah. first yeah, yeah if we I, I think Cardinal Lane is better suited for a site walk um, since we're proposing this extension we can always walk out to to Wells Road okay yeah all right, then that's the plan then to meet down at Cardinal Lane. So, okay, just to clarify, yes, meeting at Cardinal Lane, are we going down towards Loveland's or are we meeting out? You should cross over. drive, in, you should go to Cross Hill Road and then turn into Cardinal Lane and park at as far down the end of Cardinal Lane as you possibly can. Is that yep. reasonable? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, you can reverse our time? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then um, we will be holding a public hearing then on um, August 19th. So at this point, I do need a motion. Would anyone like to make a motion other than Elaine? Here we are. Motion. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Suzanne Gabriel for a private road extension and resource protection permit to extend Carmen Lane to a proposed new lot be tabled to the August 19, 2014 planning board meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Second. Joe, thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. We'll see you then um, at 7.30 on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a public meeting. It's a public meeting, and we will be looking at um, locations. Where is the road going to be? How, how high will the road be? We'll be looking at the features in front of us, and any public comment will have to come uh, to, through the chair. Um, by the applicants can certainly make any public comments and just as long as they come through the chair. You can certainly, the public is welcome to join in that site walk. Um, maybe you can work with your neighbor, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. As the hall is um, being emptied, I would but we don't have anybody wanting to speak on items not on tonight's agenda, so let's go right into adjournment. We hear a motion for adjournment. Uh, thank you, Peter. Second. Uh, Joe, thank you. Oh, sorry. Any discussion? All those in favor? We have adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>